The internationally celebrated Iranian cinema often focuses on the innocence of childhood. The spontaneity, playfulness, and wit of these on-screen Iranian children completely captivate us. It's well known that casting a child as a protagonist helps Iranian filmmakers to avoid censorial oversight. In a nation ruled by a theocratic dictatorship, a child's perception of the adult world helps a filmmaker to slightly question the inherent social limitations. Moreover, the film artists perfectly capture the rhythm of everyday life through children's innocent yet prying eyes so that the harsh realities don't escape our attention. The struggles of these children navigating their way through a repressive adult world are at once universal and specific to Iran. Through all these cinematic journeys with Iranian children, we learn that the small world of children isn't actually small. It has the power to scrutinize all the anxieties, joys, and values of a society. Jafar Banahi's The White Balloon is one perfect example of this Iranian film subgenre, a journey into the mundane adult world through the engaging perspective of a little girl. Jaffa Banaki's movies are often concerned with people's limited social mobility and freedom. Under the guise of chronicling the everyday lives of ordinary Iranians, Mr. Banaki's visual settings and narrative techniques expose the varied and complex injustices and oppression. Unfortunately, Banaki's own mobility and freedom were restricted after 2010. He was banned from leaving Iran and from making movies for 20 years. Yet, the defined filmmaker continues to use cinema as a medium of resistance, creating extraordinary self-portraits and docufictions. The White Balloon was Jaffa Banahi's feature-length directorial debut. It has a deceptively simple plot. Seven-year-old, rosy-cheeked, Razia wants a pretty and chubby goldfish in time for the Persian New Year. Busy with holiday preparations, Razia's mother sees no point in buying a fish from the shop since the traditional importance of having a goldfish in a bowl can be fulfilled by taking some from their pond. Alas, according to Razia, the ones at home are too skinny. Eventually, after making a deal with her elder brother Ali, Razia gets a 500 toman note from her mother to buy a goldfish for 100 tomans. Small setbacks, however, keep Razia from attaining her desired goldfish. First, she succumbs to the temptation of paying an unsupervised visit to the scruffy snake charmers. Later, at the shop, after locking her eyes on a chubby fish, Razia realizes that the money is missing. A kind older woman helps the little girl retrace her steps and they find it in the street. But disaster strikes when a reckless moped man causes the 500 torment bill to fall into the sewer drain in front of a closed shop. While trying to retrieve the money with the help of assertive Ali, Razia comes across a preoccupied and irritated tailor, a soldier from the provinces, and an Afghan boy selling balloons. Did Razia retrieve the money? Yes. Did she have a happy holiday? Perhaps. 
But the detour-filled narrative of White Balloon isn't simply about the girl kid's quest. In fact, the film's beauty and depth lie in the filmmaker's veiled intentions. First of all, Jaffa Banaki is skillful at using children's language to make thought-provoking statements on social conditions. These words could very well sum up Panahi's struggle against oppression. The filmmaker nevertheless shifted his attention away from children after his second film, The Mirror. Like White Balloon, Mirror has the familiar child in mild peril scenario of Iranian cinema. But Panahi, through the eyes of a feisty kid, makes a fascinating commentary on the tension between appearances and reality. Halfway into the film, the child protagonist Mina breaks the fourth wall and declares With the microphone still clipped on, Mina decides to find her way home. Then the crew covertly follows the determined kid through the busy streets of Tehran. Of course, everything in the second half of Mira was also planned out. However, unlike the white balloon, the relationship between the camera and the little girl at the center differs. At the same time, even within the strictly fabricated reality of the white balloon, Panahi isn't after the plot. It's rather a pretext to compose a microcosm of modern Iranian society. The white balloon more or less unfolds in real time, and we share Razia's sense of time. And the natural self-absorbed bubble of the child is repeatedly burst with random disruptive encounters. On the one hand, our gaze soaks in the spellbinding spectrum of Razia's emotions, from sad frown, fearful tears, to radiating smile, curiosity and wariness. On the other hand, the child's gaze provides us with a glimpse into the mundane lives of these diverse individuals. In the interviews, Panahi mentions that each of the strangers Razia comes across belongs to different ethnicities, emphasizing Tehran's dynamic, multicultural nature. Panahi imbues these supporting characters with a wealth of details. The rage of the unseen father is understood when we learn that he has two jobs. Moreover, apart from Razia, we see and hear about a diverse group of children in the narrative. Panahi also ingeniously holds back certain information, which creates a feeling of suspense and tension. For instance, how did Ali convince his mother to buy the goldfish for Razia? Or what was the soldier's second reason for returning home? Perhaps for us in Panahi, the most haunting and memorable person among the supporting players is the balloon-selling Afghan boy, from whom the film's title is derived. The final scene reminded me of Abbas Kiarostomi's 11-minute shot, Bread and Ally, which also creates a range of emotions from a simple scenario. By the end, our attention isn't focused anymore on the sweetness of Razia's quest. We begin to wonder about this balloon seller, who's probably a little older than Ali and is doomed to spend the holiday alone in the streets. And life goes on, but Panahi freezes the frame, leaving us 
with a moving image.